Arlene here tonight with the Sacred Technicians show um, and Phoenix is joining me tonight. Hello everyone. <laughs> and my um, honoured guest, Dr Gloria Benish. Hello Gloria, how are you? I'm good, thank you so much for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so I'm going to go straight into questions. Um, so can you tell me a bit about your history and what your personal healing journey has entailed? It would be my pleasure. Um, I was married to an atheist at the time. I didn't know he was atheist when I married him. And we had two children. And when Danielle was almost three, she came into the bedroom one day and she said, how come you're laying down, Mama? And I said, I have a headache, Danielle, but I'm okay. I'll be up in a few minutes. And she rubbed her two little hands together and placed one on my belly button and one up on my breastbone and t leaned her head back like she was looking at the ceiling, but her eyes were closed. But yet there was rapid eye movement. And so I knew she was looking at something. And I asked her, Danielle, what do you see? And she tick-tocked her little head back and forth as she said, I see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And then she gasped and said, oh, mom, I just saw white light. I just saw God. And I said, you saw God? And she said, oh, yes, mama. And he loves us so very much. And my headache went away. And a couple weeks later, I was in Denver visiting my parents. And my mom was complaining about her elbow hurting so I sarcastically was imitating Danielle and I said, oh, you just need a little extra love. And I rubbed my two hands together and put it on mom's elbow and closed my eyes like Danielle had and leaned my head back towards the ceiling. And I didn't see colors. My inner vision opened to a widescreen TV and I saw my mom slip on the ice at Lowry Air Force Base in Denver where she worked. And when she fell, she cracked her tailbone and hit her elbow. And then the vision closed and I opened my eyes and told her what I had seen. And she said, well, Gloria, that did happen. In fact, it, come to think of it, it happened a year ago and my elbow has hurt ever since. But son of a bee, it doesn't hurt anymore. And I said, you're kidding. And so I started saying you're kidding a lot because things like that kept happening. And I didn't tell people that I could do this. I didn't advertise or charge. You only heard about me if somebody got a miracle through me. But it just kept spreading and spreading. And I didn't have a clue what I was doing. When I got home from Denver, the telephone rang one day. And it was Rosemary, a woman I'd met many years ago. And I didn't really know her. But her first words were, I want to come to you for a healing. And I literally laughed out loud and said, what makes you think I can do anything? And she said, a month ago, I was laying in bed flat on my back. And just after I had such pain in my back, I couldn't even get out of bed until we talked on the phone. And then I could get out of bed pain free. And I said, well, you're kidding. I mean, I don't know what I did then. So I don't know what I could do now. But why don't you tell me what's going on? And I can at least offer you a positive affirmation or a kind word. And as she was talking, telling me that she'd been bleeding for a very long time and they did a DNC, but it didn't stop the bleeding. And now they wanted to do a total hysterectomy, which she didn't want. So I could audibly hear what she was saying, but my eyes were getting so heavy that I quit resisting what was happening and closed my eyes to listen to her. And in my inner vision, there was a beautiful violet light coming from the left and the right to the center and kind of pulsating and flowing outwardly. And it would gather again and pulsate and flow. And I had no idea what it was, but it was pretty. So I just kept watching it. And when she quit talking, I could open my eyes again. And I said, well, Rosemary, I don't know what I could do. Why don't you come see me Monday at noon? And so three days later, she shows up at my door. And I'm embarrassed because I forgot why she was coming. And she said, don't you remember I was bleeding? And I said, oh, yeah, that's right. And she said, but did you do something Friday? Because I haven't bled since we talked on the phone. And I, another, you're kidding. But over time um, and inner guidance from Christ, and I realized that when I rub my hands and put them on people, that I can 
the body can heal, but it's got to have energy to do so. And so I would transfer energy for some physical boo-boos, but I could also do it across the miles. And so I started writing books because I am not special in any way. Everybody can do this. It says in the Bible to seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all else will be added. And then Jesus taught that the kingdom of heaven is within. And I'm just teaching people how to go within. And again, it's so simple to do. And every family needs a healer. Everybody should be doing this themselves to make that inner direct contact with God and make it a personal experience. But um, the Go Within or Go Without book that I wrote, A Simple Guide to Self-Healing, teaches everything that you would need to know. But hopefully today I'm going to give people the most basic information that they need. And especially at this time, in all the fear-based reality that everyone's dealing with. Fantastic. It's your turn to talk, because I'll take over. <laughs> take advantage. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you. That was a that was a great kind of introduction to uh, to your journey, and um, yeah, what's um, you had another question, particularly, Carly. Oh, um, first of all, can we answer questions? So, um, please post any website or contact info that you have, Gloria, so that people can find you. Yeah, we get questions that come in as we're on the show. So we'll obviously add all your contact information, anything that's spoken about on the interview, we'll transcribe so that people can find where you are and, and your books and all about your work. Um, okay. So we'll get that all sorted. Um, but just when when questions come in, as they come in, sometimes we'll just be like, ah, oh, there's a question come up. And um, and we'll just go with what happens at yep. the time. OK. OK. So you say it's simple for people to heal themselves or heal others. Um, kind of walk us through the process. How, okay. how simple is it? It's very simple. When you rub your hands together, I don't know if you ever saw the Karate Kid movie, the first one. And Mr. Miyagi rubs his hands together to lay them on the boy to heal him to fight the last fight and win. Mm -hmm. When you rub your hands together, it turns on the energy, electricity, or love, whichever you feel most comfortable calling it. And one of the most important things I can teach is when you rub your hands and put them over your eyes, the palms on your eyes and fingers up towards the forehead, the eyes are the windows to the soul and the fastest way to get energy into the body. And so I say that I would like you to do it first thing in the morning when you wake up. You might have slept all night and you wake up sometimes feeling hammered, like you never got any rest at all. But if you put your hands over your eyes first thing in the morning, beefing up your energy field. Then at noon when you've eaten, it takes energy to digest your food and you feel sluggish. If you'll sit at the table after you've eaten and rub your hands together, put them over your eyes and lean your elbows on the table and your face into your hands, it raises your energy field. And then at night, when you're falling asleep and you lay on your side and the arm that's not laying next to the bed, prop a teddy bear or a pillow under that upper arm to rest on to support it as you're falling asleep at night. It takes away, it dissolves fear and negativity it heightens your consciousness and it expands your energy field. And I tell people too, if you've been around an energy vampire, and I mean that in the nicest way because some of them are our best friends, but after, and they walk out uplifted after they dump all their stuff on you, but you feel hammered. So if after they walk out, rub your hands, put them over your eyes and beef up your energy field again, but keep your energy as high as you can possibly. And finally, I tell people when you're sitting on the throne in the bathroom, unless you're reading one of my books, what better thing do you have to do with your hands? <laughs> and to take every opportunity to keep your energy as high as possible. Um, it heals, it doesn't heal, but it dissolves depression. When people are depressed and it's because they're carrying the weight of the world and the anxiety and confusion that they have, this is a really easy tool in order to heighten your energy and not have to turn to pharmaceuticals. It yeah. is a very important thing. If you did nothing that I'm going to teach today but that, 
uh, it would make a difference in your life. Fantastic. Um, that actually reminds me, when I've read kind of your, your book, going through, you know, putting your hands um, over your eyes, when I was very little, and I started healing when I was five, um, the one thing that I used to do from that very, very early age was to put my hands over my eyes so that I could see better. Wow, see? Right. Yeah. Yeah, okay. it, just, like, it just reminded me, kind of reading your book, going back right. to, you know, four or five years old and going, oh, I need to put my hands over my eyes so that I can see better because right. light interferes. It does. <laughs> I want to ask you something because you're sitting right there and we're going to make you our guinea pig, but I would like you to lean your head back like you're looking at the ceiling yep. and I want you to slowly rotate your head, keep your head back. Now slowly rotate it over your right shoulder. Yep. Come down over your upper chest. Keep coming very yep. slowly over your left shoulder and back to the original position. Did you hear any little crunches in your neck? Yeah, a couple. Okay, what that is because the pineal gland at the base back bottom of the head, the master gland of the body, it starts crystallizing and when you do that, not enough electricity can come in and maintain the body. So, and I don't want anyone to overdo that. But say for a moment that you had a pain in your knee, your right knee. If you rub your hands together and put your hands on the knee and slowly rotate your head. And we're going to teach also how to see the light within as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> but when you hear those crunches, it's like... The blocks in your pineal gland or in your body is like a kink in the garden hose where you, the water doesn't flow. When you rotate your head like that, you're going to hear the crunches. And every one of those crunches is opening up another water hose for the electricity to flow to go to do a normal healing. The energy is divine intelligence, so it knows where to go to restore the balance. But if you rotate your head and put your hands on your knee or wherever you're hurting... And then to see the light, when Daniel, my daughter, said, I see red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, she didn't, she was so tiny, she'd never even learned the color spectrum of the rainbow. She knew her colors, but not in what order they came. So I would like people to practice, and when you close your eyes, you might see t tiny pinpoints of white light, and if so, and that's a good thing, but sometimes it turns red. And then it might be orange. It doesn't even have to come in the color order of the color spectrum because each color means something. But um, when you see the violet light, you are plugged in directly, 110 volt human into 220 volt divine per se. And you have made the divine contact. And when you do that, expect a miracle. Um, the energy blockages, which is a kink in the garden hose, sometimes when you've been laying in bed at night and you remember, like you feel like you're falling and you jerk really hard and it kind of hurts, you know, just for a millisecond. Mm -hmm. When one of those experiences happens when you're doing love light on yourself and healing work, it's when you have made the direct connection very rapidly and then you definitely expect a miracle. It means that the consciousness of whatever you're dealing with has been purified all the way back to the original cause of perfection as he created it. So if that were to happen, don't be frightened. But every shift and electrocution, I call it, because it's a zap. Mm -hmm. So when it happens, that's a good thing. Oh. Okay, I've, I've experienced that before, that kind of like that sharp sort of jerk when you're kind of just falling asleep. And I've right. always, wondered, always wondered what that is. It's just a, it's a, just a, yeah. That's very interesting. That's the first time I've ever come across anyone with a sort of explanation. I've heard about it and experienced it myself. So, yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely. To ask any other questions. <laughs> um, so can you tell us a bit more about um, your book? And in your book, it kind of it gives your a lot of your life story and and what actually happened to you in your life to initiate 
your own kind of inner journeying and inner healing work for yourself could you tell people about that okay um before i do that i would like to go back to one other thing so i don't forget to tell people and i'm going to use an example to explain it but i had also the contact information i put my home phone number in thousands of books in case people needed me that they would be able to locate me when people get rich and famous and you can't get in touch with them and I'm not rich or famous, but I also wanted people to know that they can call my home phone and get me. And if I'm not picking up, leave a, a message and I will call you back. I will not ignore you. I'll, I'm doing the best I can as one person here. Um, but I had a woman call me from L.A. one day and she said, I just went to a healer out here. I've been going to him, but today he told me that my breast cancer is gone and I'm getting ready to have a mastectomy on Monday. And I just thought I'd call and talk to you and see what you have to say. And I said, Judy, I would like you to do me a favor. I'd like you to rub your hands together and about an inch away from your right bazuma. I want you to tell me, does it feel hot or cold or just right? And she said, well, I guess it feels just right because I don't feel hot or cold. I said, now I want you to rub your hands together and place them over your left bazuma and tell me, does it feel hot or cold or just right? And she did, and she said, oh, my gosh, that one feels really hot. And I said, I know, Judy, because it's still there. It's not gone. And I will begin immediately across the miles starting to dissolve that state of consciousness and for her to put her hands over her eyes. Well, she ended up going Monday and getting a mastectomy. And so when she called me after the procedure, I was crying on the phone saying, I'm so sorry I failed you. I couldn't get my consciousness high enough to dissolve it because it had been there so long. I didn't have the time to do it. And sometimes it's a millisecond before a miracle happens. Other times, if it's been established in the consciousness a very long time, it takes a minute. And not to get dismayed over that. Sometimes within 72 hours, uh, you'll get bingo, a miracle. Uh, but anyway, she started squawking at me. You did not fail me. If I wouldn't have called you, I would not have known, and I, I would have canceled the appointment for the mastectomy, and it could have spread, and it could have killed me instead. You didn't fail me. But I want people to know, too, that they can do this on their loved ones. If you are working with a pet, it works on pets, too. Cats can take energy forever. They are energy-sucking vampires, but a dog will start panting when they've had enough. But if you even rub it across your own body and feel a hot or cold spot, cold is not enough electricity. Hot is too much electricity, and we want it to be just right to have a balance of the energy. But if you were to feel a hot or cold spot on yourself and it's not yet hurting you, you're having an opportunity to take care of something before it ever manifests. And I think that's important for people to know. Um, as far as the book that you just asked me about, if we're going to jump into all that information right now, um, you're, you're asking me about my life and everything that went on. So are, I'm assuming you want me to talk about the the bad stuff that happened. You want me to jump and into how, that? Yeah, and how you managed to get yourself through your own healing process. Okay, alrighty. Well, the book that I'm giving out freely to the world right now is called Guts and Glory. Uh, the A has fallen off the line and hanging by a thread. The subtitle, From Fear to Eternity. It's a book that has been written in order to balance, well, to set love in motion, to balance the fear that's been created from the virus, the corruption being revealed, the rioting, and whatever that's next to keep us all divided. Um, so I'm talking about healing abuse because there is abuse of power right now, number one, but we also experience it individually in our lives. So I talk about it being that I take subjects, different subjects that are very sensitive, and I call them turds, and I polish those turds and turn them into inspirational books with my silly sense of humor and my divine wisdom as a nice balance. But this book is uh, for the whole world. If they come to the Miracle Publishing and Distribution website, it's 
easy to download freely and easily. And again, I would hope that everybody would tell a friend and get that book moving. I'm Nothing I've ever done has been for the money, as you'll read in that book and what I'm saying right now. I have such a pure love and passionate love for humanity. Everybody, I love humanity. And I've sat here for all during this lockdown and just about gone crazy thinking I could be out there and helping people so much. But until we got this book um, provided as a PDF for humanity, it was like I was sitting here on my hands going, I can't do anything right now, the timing and everything. But the difference that it can make in your life because it's dealing with you on a spiritual level as well as a physical level and as an individual being. Uh, but it's got powerful information in it too because of the abuse that I'm talking about with humanity. That here I was this little airy fairy spiritual healer and experiencing miracles every day of my life and my husband passed away unexpectedly almost 14 years ago. And he was my support system. Uh, he said, I am so happy you love the world, Gloria, because if you focused all that love on me, it would kill me. But he <laughs> died unexpectedly in 23 minutes. He was just gone. And then a man who wore the face of a friend um, raped me. And then after the family left from the funeral, he came back with friends. And I went through 24 nonviolent rapes and three violent rapes and so but I didn't know because I had been drugged and so I didn't I hurt so bad but I didn't know why and I kept going to doctors I went to 50 doctors in five states and I couldn't make the contact with my light all all I would see when I closed my eyes was dark and I kept going to doctors and they would say it's grief go back to Montana and learn how to deal with it and I kept thinking, it can't be grief. I mean, my heart is broken that I lost Kirk, but I'm talking about my physical body hurts. And finally, eight and a half years later, after being down in the rabbit hole and not being able to do anything but lay around in fetal position with the drapes closed all day, hardly able to breathe, and I started reliving what had been done to me, but without the predators in the room. Well. I'm not going to say the bad word, but I'm going to say that when I became aware what had happened to me by reliving it, I got very angry to say the least, and I thought um, they screwed with the wrong gal this time because I'm going to do something about it. And I wrote a book on rape and abuse, the prevention and recovery, and I took it national, and I got it in three other countries. I took my entire retirement to publish this book and start out on a mission across the nation to create the Global Eight Prayer Peace Movement. And I went out for three months at a time for three years in a row here, handing out this information and laying down 7,500 free books to um, explain what it is that I'm trying to do in the bigger picture. But I got the books from coast to coast. I sent them to Gloria Allred, the famous attorney for the Bill Cosby victims, and got them out there. Um, and the first Bill Cosby victim that called me, and she told me that she and Gloria Allred were going to Colorado to the Senate to try and pass the statute of limitations law to extend it. And I asked how many people would be present, and so I mailed her cases of books so each one of them could have it and the statute of limitations was extended, which most humanity doesn't even know here in the U.S., but it was a result of that going on. And so it got passed, and they took it on to Washington, D.C., and it got passed there. And Beth called me after it had been changed, the statute of limitations, and she said, Gloria, it was quite anticlimactic because after we won, we went out to dinner, just Gloria Allred and myself, to celebrate, but nobody even knew that they were doing this for the nation and so the book in itself is total truth and lies ultimate freedom for the soul that book is what helped that process happen but i got it to sex trafficking law enforcement uh safe houses ymca or ywcas uh, i got it everywhere i have hand carried that book everywhere or mailed it to the Rape Abuse Incest National Network, every possible place, universities, the 
rape departments on site or on the universities at the universities but I was doing everything I could and as a one-man show it was getting quite frustrating but then I went public again I hadn't been out speaking for almost 15 years and went public speaking in Spokane Washington in October and I got some support then so that it's not I, 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 Gloria, Gloria, Gloria did whatever. It's now a we, and now with you and doing this today, I'm getting the message out there bigger. And I, again, I appreciate you so much on every level. In fact, when you're reading that book, and I tell people, I would like you to read it as if I wrote it exactly to you, that we're having a conversation across the table, and I'm talking to you directly because I am. And any person that opens that book, you are going to feel how much I love you because it is a fact. And I will do everything I can as long as I'm still breathing in and out to do everything I can to make this insanity stop. And we're on a good, we're really doing okay. If you look back, and I am not taking credit for this part, but three years ago, almost four years ago now that I set all this in motion, um, if you notice, and again, it's been happening before the book went out, but it did start escalating with the Me Too movement and all that. But when you pray for your enemy, it doesn't tell you why in the Bible. It says it's easy to pray for those we love. But when you pray for your enemy, it, place, it diminishes their ability to hurt anyone else. They are thwarted in their attempts. They're placed where they can't hurt anyone. And it's a very powerful thing because nobody, I mean, we've all proven for all these years that hate and anger is not going to heal anything. And it just continues to beget more anger and hatred. But love is the healing quality. And so I had a, a lady that I saw on Facebook the other day in Florida as she's talking about some people playing rap music so loud that it's vibrating everything around the neighborhood and how angry she was and I said I want you to think of your best friend and how much love you have for that best friend now add a few more people that you love your grandkids or children think of how much love you have for all of them now send the thought to whoever's sending that or playing that rap music because those who deserve it the least are the ones who need it the most and so this prayer that I'm putting out there the global eight prayer in this book guts and glory uh it is what's going to heal the world we're going to ever well you'll see as you have read every time we run into a snag whether it's rape and abuse or somebody hurts you financially or in whatever way or even being around a narcissist or somebody selfish you say that prayer because if they're a bad guy, if they're wearing the black hat, they're either going to be thwarted or they're going to be lifted up to their spiritual nature and reality. And if you pray it for your loved one, oh my gosh, that is really cool that what happens because our gifts are being turned on, they're being expanded, and the doors of opportunity are opening to us when you say the prayer for your loved ones as well. So it's a pray for one, one another with this prayer that I'm putting in this book. Absolutely. It works. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I've, I came across your work, Gloria, through uh, an interview that you did with a lady, um, a targeted individual. And um, that's where I first came across you. And um, the when you related the simplicity of the prayer and also, you know, just the rubbing your hands together, um, hands over the eyes. It just felt such a, you know, just that simplicity, you know, um, exactly. and that's really what resonated for me um, and obviously has gone on to here we are now and continuing to, to spread your message. Um, there was a point to that, and I've lost my train of thought. <laughs> we'll come back. I have something to say. Yeah, no, it's just the simplicity of the prayer, which obviously is is noted um, in the Guts for Glory uh, book, um, which we will put a link up because it's free and it can be you know downloaded from your website, so that's accessible to people um, to get this information, which is great. So yeah, to to your point, my love. 
and I appreciate that so very much. Um, my friend and I were sitting here in the kitchen this morning talking about this because, again, I never charged people to do this. Well, that's not true. In the very beginning, I charged a quarter, and I was being quite silly about it. And when I got home from being in Arizona and doing healings for people, I got back to Sacramento, and I dumped the quarters in my hand and counted them, and there were 52 quarters. And out loud, I said, wow, I helped 52 people in Arizona. And it felt like somebody kicked me in the stomach, and the inner voice said, you helped no one. I healed 52 people through you, and I never charged again, not even a quarter. And what happens is that even when I found out, you know, hurting so bad after the assaults and I went to 50 doctors and I went to all different modalities of spiritual healer healers they said they were and all I kept doing was greasing their palm with more money and more money and coming away disappointed with nothing you know to make myself feel better but we shouldn't have to pay for love all of it should be free and I have donated my books to 1,104 state and federal prisons. I have a prison ministry since 1990, and I have gotten the books on tape for libraries so that even the blind can get the information, and it's books on tape in prisons as well. So again, I'm just a one-man show here, but I would give everything I have in order for the entire world to experience the beauty that I have and the miracles and the peace that I feel, and that's another thing, even with the virus, I was never afraid of it, the media trying to frighten everybody, and of course they used our loved ones, because what if we have it and infect them, you know, so I didn't want to make my kids or grandkids sick, even though I'm the elder, then they wanted to not maybe infect me, so it's kind of a ploy on our emotions that, of course we love everybody so much, we don't want to put anyone in harm's way, and I was never afraid of the virus because as a mystic mama here mm -hmm. and teaching mystic Christ, uh, Christianity, because Jesus was a mystic. And what that means, the word mysticism, you're getting your information direct. I'm not going to the Bible and to church. I don't go to church. I am a minister, but I am the church. I am the healing center. I am. I don't have to go outside myself. I just go direct which I would like to teach everybody right now. When you wake up in the morning, and I told you I want you to put your hands over your eyes, I want you to, first of all, when you walk into a room, and don't you like to have somebody say hi to you? And God is the same way. When you wake up and you say, good morning, God, you're recognizing his presence. And I also want you to acknowledge that presence and power within yourself and say that in the morning and off and on throughout the day if you forget or get angry or afraid i acknowledge that power and presence within me the kingdom of heaven is within me and that means within my state of consciousness and so we wake up in the morning we put our hands on our eyes and we say good morning god i acknowledge your power and presence within me and then i'm going to give thanks for three things before I ever put my feet on the floor, I'm going to give thanks that he already created this day. He's gone before me. He's prepared my way in day. He's made the crooked places straight. He's smoothed things out. And I'm going to thank him that I have a house, you know, I food and clothing. I mean, I, there are a million things I could thank him for. But the next thing I'm going to thank him for is that everything that I need throughout this day is already established within my consciousness and as I need it it will appear well we're gonna not any longer struggle trying to seek out anything that we quote unquote need because it already is established within us and because of that he brings what we need to us to our front door or through an individual whatever but we don't have to strive and struggle for anything once you do this then I would like you to think of one thing, just one thing, what do you know about God? Okay, and I usually think he's all powerful, but those are still just empty words unless you have experienced it. You can sit and read or hear about an inspirational book or a speaker all day long and it's not gonna do anything for you in the long run except momentary upliftment 
but I want you to have upliftment for every day of your life. And so once I say he's all powerful, again, those are just human words unless you've experienced it. But now I want to ask the Holy Spirit to open my inner listening ear so I can receive the word of God because I live by every word that proceeds out of his mouth. Again, we God is not an intellectual concept. It is an experience, and that's what I'm teaching people through my writings and through speaking. When you do ask for your inner listening ear to open, the next thing and only thing you have to do is listen for 60 seconds or two minutes. Just listen like you're waiting for Gloria or somebody to say something and lay there in the quiet just waiting for something to be said. And then it might be you're going to have four different ways of knowing that you made that direct contact, whether you heard anything audibly or inaudibly. You might feel extreme warmth in your being and start kicking covers off. You might heavy sigh. You might hear a click in your left ear. And when it sounds like a pop, like you're going over a mountain pass and or audibly or inaudibly hearing him say something either in one word or a full sentence or a knowingness and once you have that sensation any one of those four things you plug the 110 volt human into 220 volt divine now get up and race to the bathroom for your first morning tinkle and then watch what happens in your day-to-day -day experience and literally somebody calling on the phone if you have a question ever or you're in confusion don't ask 20 different people and get 20 different opinions ask it silently and start playing this game of watching how God answers you and through somebody who's unsuspecting that they're even even giving you the answer but it works it absolutely works absolutely. and it does need to remain simple absolutely simple because it is it's been made way harder than it needs to be mm. yeah so we've got a few questions. Okay. Gloria. Yes. So um, Gaz initially said, um, that's what I'm talking about, rubbing my hands and putting them on a painful area and the pain goes away. So we've already got, um, Gaz kind of came out as a psychic. Um, Gaz is the producer of the show, came out as a psychic. Right. Um, and, and healer. Um, uh, was it last week week before on the show um sharing his experiences and you know he's obviously you know feeling the same thing um he says he also brought a spider back to life by the very same process of rubbing his hands and cupping the spider inside uh -huh. them um he says okay here's the question so often when i perform the healing process I feel very weak and tired. Is that a normal feeling or am I doing something incorrect after I have finished? Okay. Um, that's a really good question. When I do healings, I am pumped. I am not tired. So my first idea of what he's experiencing is the fact that he is an empath and he took on what the other person was feeling. And when that happens to us, um, it's very beneficial to have the gift of empathy and to know because as a healer, if I have a headache and I'd never get headaches, but if I get one and I'm with someone or thinking about them, I'm going to rub my hands and take care of it. When I no longer feel it, they won't either because we are one. But as an empath, I knew where to put my hands when I was doing a private healing. But if you are feeling like that after you've worked on somebody, you can go outside and walk on the grass. You can wash your hands. In fact, it's very important to wash your hands before and after working on someone. Or you could lean your spine against a tree and burn it off because it's not his. In fact, most of what all of us are feeling isn't ours. We're carrying it for someone in the world, you know, that we know or maybe don't know. But we little people pleaser light workers out there are carrying a large bunch of all this stuff right now yeah i think that's with um empaths exactly is that some days it sucks like <laughs> you know yeah right. empaths are like sponges we suck everything in i know it right to try to assist everybody yeah 
yeah. to, you know, process their stuff. And if you're not aware of how to actually heal yourself and do it for yourself, then you're the one that ends up with all of the stuff. <laughs> right. Well, and, and I have done it on purpose. I have actually done it on purpose. If I thought that I was only going to see someone in passing, I would take their stuff on because I knew I would burn it off later. But I wanted, if we were only passing in time, I didn't want them to walk away with any of it. So I would take it on, which I would not recommend to anyone doing. <laughs> And I shouldn't do it myself, but I did, and I have to admit I did. Yeah, I, I can remember, in, it's in the same way, I'm very empathic, um, had no boundaries at all, would psychically sponge on, you know, everything that was passing. Um, and I can remember going up to London at one point in, in the healing journey process back to myself, um, and I was up all night burning 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 boiling hot every burning everything off that i picked up from every single person that i had walked past that day so you know being an empath can right. often be a difficult journey yes indeed but it's it's knowing how you work you know knowing that a lot of the stuff that you believe is yours isn't um, and right. how to deal with that as well, you know, keeping yourself clear so that you're a clearer channel for taking on more. <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Morning, noon, and night, and every time you go to the bathroom, hands over the eyes and keep yourself high and clear. Yeah. I love teaching little children, too. Riding in the car one day and my grandson, Colton, five, and... Taylor was three, and Taylor said, I have a headache, Mama B. And I said, I looked in the rearview mirror and said, Colton, you know how to do this. Take care of it. He rubbed his hands together and said, okay. Well, I was saying from dr driving, Colton, what color do you see? Orange. What color now? Tell me when you see a different color. Okay, it's pink. It's green. It's blue. Okay, it's purple, Granny B. And Taylor said, and my head doesn't hurt anymore. So teaching little children, the minute they know their color spectrum, they can do it. And they don't question, they just do it. Absolutely. And we need those children to know how to make their direct contact. First thing, as soon as they can speak and know their colors. And again, I'm not trashing religions, but I think they have failed in so many ways of having somebody stand up there and speak inspirationally, but the people walk out and... You might get spiritual food for a minute, but we want to, is, do you want to feed them a fish or do you want to teach them how to fish? We want to teach them how to fish. Yep. How to get it themselves direct. They all deserve to be empowered. And this is a time in the history of mankind to do it. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. I was yep. talking to my, talking to my stepdaughter and uh, telling her about the technique and she was like, oh, she said, I, I do that. I do that anyway. I, you, you know, it's like a natural thing when she's sitting, you know, whether it's on the throne or somewhere. It was just something she she knew to do. Maybe not the rubbing the hands first, but just was a way of her to, I don't know, kind of lessen her anxiety or whatever. But it was just right. when I was relating it to her, she you know, she related to the fact that how she found that very relaxing in itself. Right. So I think, like you say, you know, as, as children, maybe even they, they're, they're hardwired to it, to right. begin with, but then, exactly. you know, just grow, grow up and change things. But um, it's, it's just such a wonderfully simple, <clears throat> she has a three-year-old son. And so I was like, why, you know, you want to teach him and get him into this, you know, to do to do the same thing, um, and that's how. And again, it's the simplicity that uh, right. I love. Um, exactly. So, yeah, wonderful. And so many books, so many books. Obviously, guts and glory uh, is is something that you've released for free, um, but you have many publications um, that uh, obviously as resources that people can. Uh, can find uh, through your website obviously we will post all the details for that um, uh, on the show afterwards 
but um, yeah, calling. So continue. there's also another question that says, um, <clears throat> can the healing also help with targeted individuals because they are often tortured? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yes. And I say that you have been a targeted individual. Yes. Uh, and I think that many of us that are carrying, I, I wouldn't call it a burden, <laughs> although sometimes it feels that way, you know, that we have a specific role to play and something to do here. Right. Are often targeted because there are other aspects that don't want us to ever speak up. Right. Well, I tried forever to get someone to help me and I would get just so close and then the door would slam. Almost had um, my own daytime program. Uh, there were, they wanted a group of people following 911 to go out and inspire the world and nobody sent anyone from my publishing house to represent me. They did put my book Go Within or Go Without on the cover of the New York Times on October 5th of that year following 911. Um, as a book to bring hope to a tired world. But she was just asking about my other writings and just briefly I want to say a couple things. I had a woman come from across the miles for a private healing and I made homemade food for her uh, green chili bean burrito enchilada style tossed salad, home fried chips, homemade salsa, homemade guacamole and a dessert. And after she got done eating, she barked at me and she said, you can't keep doing stuff like this. And I said, doing stuff like what? And she said, you can't invite the whole world into your home and feed them, Gloria. And I said, watch me. So I wrote Go Within or Go Without. And I invite you into my home to spend a day with me as a housewife and mother and author and spiritual healer. And I teach you how to do what I do. And that book... It was self-published and I had it went back for three printings and then on the third printing it grew legs and walked into New York City to the world's largest independently owned publisher in the world and they reprinted it for me in New York. But I did more on my own as a self-published author than I ever did with a New York publisher. Um, and then spiritual lifesavers and spiritual training wheels, those are bringing the entire family into my home. Each of my books kind of brings you into my home anyway because I am a food pusher and I'm going to feed you. Even in the book, some people gain five pounds from reading how much I feed them in the books. <laughs> but And I give recipes too. But the go within or the uh, total truth and lies, I am not proud of that book. I don't want anyone under the age of 16 to read it without parental permission. It is filled with profanity. Um, I say that I... I have many languages that I can speak because I can talk like a sailor and a truck driver. And I mean, I'm going to get the point across. And I did in that book because old fiddle faddle and old fudge is not going to cut it. So that book is um, pretty profane. But I went from writing profane to writing the most inspirational book I've ever written in my life. And that was As God is My Witness, the revised edition. And that book was the rope of hope to pull me up out of the rabbit hole all the way and it is a christian mystical view of the bible teaches us there are two powers good and evil and we're living with that right now in our humanity and literally i mean i never believed in satan and evil until this happened to me and now that i'm aware of what our um big players on the planet have been doing when I fell down the rabbit hole and I had no idea there were that many tunnels down there, you know, to start with. And But the book, As God is My Witness, revised edition, that one is e-booked with Amazon, as is Total Truth and Lies. Um, I don't have that many copies left of Total Truth and Lies, but it's available as an e-book. But physical books, I have been handing them out as many as I could to get it into the hands of women that have been raped or abused. But the As God is My Witness revised edition, again, it's the most inspirational book I ever wrote. Um, and it's not me, the author. I'm the messenger. Um, mostly I'm the messenger on all my books. They take between 24 and 36 hours to write. The Guts and Glory uh, 
that one was it took seven weeks because I had interruptions I was going out publicly speaking again so the books just pour through me as you see on this program here that I'm third generation motor mouth and I can type 120 words a minute so I can write them very very quickly I just listen to the thoughts in my head and afterwards I read through them and I'm I'm very grateful that I get to be the messenger you know for all the writings all the glory is going to God that's why the A fell off the line on guts and glory uh, because glory of the ego part is removed and all the glories go on to God in that book well on all the books I there's no way I could have possibly ever done the things that have happened to and through me I've had an amazing life and I want everybody else to experience that same beauty and the supernatural is awesome I'm telling you <laughs> it's fun it is so much fun and the things that God can do he uh, in witness I was writing my version of what I wanted to put into it where there God is on trial for seven crimes against humanity and God has asked me to be his defender to demonstrate and prove his innocence and so as they're bringing him to and fro from the jail cell to the courtroom to take the stand and he's in shackles and handcuffs and so at one point I added my own two cents in there that the two guards that were bringing him back and forth were actually the two thieves on the cross that day that he, he was crucified and now in this incarnation that they had come back as the opposite meaning the guards instead of thieves and I read it out loud to a friend when I wrote it and then the next day I went in to work on the book and it was gone God removed it and so I put it back in there because I'm kind of stubborn and he removed it again so I realized that it doesn't matter how many times I'm gonna type something in there if it was in error to what he wanted he would remove it and he also put things in there that I am I did not type ever I've got a photographic memory when I have written something and I know what I said and I never said a lot of that stuff and because he added to it and uh, I won't take away from the if you read the book of what he did also one day here in my home with that manuscript that I had no part in he did that to make a point with me <laughs> it's, he's pretty funny though he's got a sense of humor at least you'd have to <laughs> yeah seeing what's going on down here it's yeah right uh, yeah <laughs> but we've got so many beautiful things coming you know I'm hoping that the people will read this book pray for their enemies and their loved ones pray for one another but we have got so many beautiful things coming on this planet mm -hmm. we just got a clean house first and it's gonna be okay and we are going to do uh, the again I I think I'm getting ready to write another book because I'm pretty excited about the things that are forthcoming and I'm not a prophet per se but I know stuff I said I don't know if I can say this on the radio are you gonna bleep me if I shouldn't be saying it uh, uh, no <laughs> But, no. Yeah, no, but um, I wouldn't say it. If you can say it a different way. <laughs> okay, um, well, let me ponder for one second. Maybe you'll have to bleep. Okay, I got it, I got it, I got it. I can do it. I don't think I'd be bleeped. Okay, because I walk around some days and I go, I don't know Pupa Kaka. You know, I I have intuition and I know stuff, but I don't know Pupa Kaka. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Does that make sense? Okay because yeah. I'd rather say it the way I say it to quote myself but all right so I have to be careful what I say you can't bleep me <laughs> <laughs> okay. there's the okay. words on my yeah oh, how... alongside uh, her healing benefits does Gloria have vision yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes <laughs> and how soon is forthcoming we'll say okay as in the next book the next book are you asking I, I think it's more to do with the changes that you're seeing coming oh, more than the okay that is there for humanity to you know leave all the well, next I stuff sense, behind. I sense that humanity's Independence Day is uh, it's on the horizon we've got such major changes let me see the changes to me I missed that the but change did you to say? me soon is a four-letter word. 
Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> okay. Well, we're in. I have to stop and say, what month are we in? I said January the other day, and my housemate said, it's May, Gloria. Well, now we're already in June. So, but I thought it was January because who knows what day it is anymore. There were 134 <laughs> days in April. <laughs> It's been very bizarre. <laughs> A global timeout. No kidding. Mm. Yeah, um, reset. Global reset. Yeah, but also sort of time to go within. It has felt on a, on many levels. Exactly. Mm. Absolutely. So we also wanted to ask you about your um, experiences with Q Sciences CBD oil. Oh, that alrighty. Seems like to be quite a pivotal thing in yes, your it is. journey. I am so glad you brought that up. Um, in fact, I might have to walk away from the uh, thing here to get the information, or you would put it up there for me. Yeah. Of calling Stacy Barker, that was amazing stuff. I had been because I had been so violently raped, and every night I would go to bed. And I would relive it all. I would think about it and the amount of pain and everything. And it wasn't so much that I had fear that they were going to come back and do it again. I had fear of them ever doing it um, well, hurting one of my children or grandchildren or somebody else's. It just kept me awake and stewed up for hours and hours every night. I was lucky to get two or three hours sleep because I had so much anxiety after knowing that this stuff exists on planet Earth. And so, I again, I had tried everything. I tried hemp oil, I mean, um, CBD oil, many different brands at $100 or 170 a bottle for a little bottle, and it never worked. It never did anything to help me. And then I was invited to a program one night. Um, the lady that works at our grocery store, um, she asked me if I would like to come to a meeting and being a people pleaser I said oh sure and then the closer it got to coming time to go I really didn't want to go I she wasn't in front of me to have to please her and I thought well I'll just say that something came up and then I thought I don't want to lie anymore to people you know even half lies white lies whatever I don't want to but because I didn't want to tell the truth I decided to go <laughs> so I, I went and you know how they have testimonials all the time of different products and it's in one ear and out the other because it's like, so what, you know, nothing's ever worked in all these years of being down the rabbit hole. And uh, But what happened that night is they gave a sample. And as soon as I took it, I mean, within 10 minutes, I was so relaxed. And they said, are you okay to drive home? Because I guess I looked pretty relaxed. <laughs> but I said, I'm sure I can drive home. And I came home, and for the first time in 13 and a half years, I didn't have anxiety. I was laying there thinking about inspirational things instead. And that's when the book, um, The Guts and Glory, uh, started coming through me. But up until then, I had thought nothing but rape and abuse thoughts every night for 13 and a half years. But it was an immediate, it just took the anxiety away. Total calmness, peace in my mind. And then because I could think at, and be at peace, I was able to plug back into the violet light and to that higher state of consciousness. And the miracles started happening through my life again for people across the miles and physically. But Stacy Barker, again, I'm not a salesman. I'm not trying to put a plug in for even Q Sciences, other than the fact that that stuff works if you have anxiety. And so Stacy Barker and her phone number and email is in that book in order for people to reach out to her. Again, I'm not a salesman. I don't want to place orders for people, but Stacy would take care of you and do a good job doing it. And she's a God lover and a people pleaser so she's gonna go above and beyond to make people happy because <laughs> you you said in in your book that you you tried a number of different types of um, CBD yeah. yeah I did many types I've got them in my refrigerator right now still because I've never finished using them they didn't work for me ah. 
Right. But the Q Science products, their vitamins too. I mean, they make all the difference in the world. But the testimony that I put in Guts and Glory, uh, um, it's from the heart. It is purely from the heart that this is what I feel about that product. I had been asked by the New York publishing CEO never to endorse anyone's product, uh, to be very cautious because it's my integrity on the line, and therefore I just thought I'll never endorse anyone's product. So this is the first time that I ever endorsed anybody in all these years of doing this. But it will, I believe it can help. It did for me, and I tried everything. So another question for you. So we have an alignment happening soon, round about summer solstice. Can Gloria shed light on any potential changes happening at that time? There's amazing changes coming. Our gifts are going to get turned on. Um, you don't want to be a liar because people are going to know it because it, we're going to have our telepathy full force. We're going to know stuff. And every one of our gifts is coming online that's why i'm saying in guts and glory you need to just get prepared all those years that you've prepared and done things for your dream and the doors are getting ready to open and windows of opportunity and you just need to be aware it's coming it's happening absolutely absolutely um so i wanted to also talk about your future plans your own future plans. What are your future plans? I want you to come to my house and I want to love you and love you more than you've ever been loved before in your life and to make food for you and nurture you and wait on you hand and foot and just let you relax and be serene and to know how loved you are. Mm. Well, actually with you and um, our other friend that I don't know if I can talk about, um, our girls' slumber party <laughs> at the beach. <laughs> Talking about all the wonderful things that humanity is experiencing, that that's happening so many that we have, we're just all rattling because we're so excited about it. What's forthcoming? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, um, Gloria had a, a vision of um, Phoenix and I going over to um, a house on a beach somewhere and having a slumber party because um, <laughs> we've got work to do, <laughs> three of us <laughs> together, um, <laughs> catching up, yeah. And um, uh, Gloria's mentioned before that we were very close friends, but I didn't quite know in what ways yet. <laughs> I wasn't right, quite I aware will. of... Of how Bring on the wine. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, I had a, a healing session uh, a few last week, and um, Gloria decided to turn up with her entourage <laughs> <laughs> in the room. <laughs> and we hadn't met yet to even know what it, what we looked like. Yeah. Yeah, right. didn't even. Was I uh, taller then? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. You, you were you were still very small. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you had a, a rather large crowd standing behind you. So. Well, you that's know. very nice to know. But our soul contract began today with this interview, and we have lots more to do. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yep. We're best so, friends. You just didn't know it yet. <laughs> but I'm my learning. future I'm learning. Right. Come on. <laughs> I know. My future plans are to create a healing center for humanity. And I've been everywhere, man. Oh my gosh, I have done so much traveling looking for the place that it would be best to put, you know, easy access in and out airfare and all that kind of thing and trying to take care of everyone's needs and think ahead and but every time I went somewhere uh, I kept getting my little hiney drug right back to the Bitterroot Valley, and I'm still not sure that it's here. I went and talked to a benefactor last week about having one here, and um, his land was marvelous, but the house is not big enough for what I'm planning because I do want people to come and learn the technique through my workshop and 
have a day together and those that have been raped and abused that we can sit around and talk about it we have to talk about it yeah and get it up you can't clean up what you can't see and holding that stuff inside you is not doing anything but hurting you so i want to create a safe zone where people can come and there is nothing you can say to me that would shock me i'll tell you what but I have hopes that humanity is going to come where that woman said, you can't bring the whole world into your house, Gloria. And I go, watch me, because I would love to. I would love to have people come. And I want it to be by donation only. I'm not holding out my hand to take. I'm holding out my hand to offer support and to give. So if people choose to donate to me, they can. And if they don't, that's okay, too. I don't want anyone in, under any obligation ever to give if their heart doesn't have it to give. And they've all given plenty already. It's time to receive. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Well, wonderful stuff. So, um, how can people <clears throat> get hold of you? Okay, I have two different websites. So, if they have pen and paper, or um, if you guys are going to list that for them, I have my publishing company. I publish not only my stuff but I am distributing other authors things that I think are very important for people to know about but the publishing website is www.miraclepublishingdistribution.com and my ministry website which my uh, person taking care of it is quite behind on she's got all of it she just hasn't had time to put it up but my ministry is www.miraclehealingministry.org and I, I think she told me that we own the dot com too so www.miraclehealingministry.com as well um, those are the two websites my personal email is miracle message at yahoo.com and my home phone number because it's in books anyway is 406-777-5632 <laughs> I had a woman call at 1030 one night and my husband Kirk got up and answered the phone and the woman barked who is this and he said well ma'am this is Kirk May I help you? And she paused and said, The Kirk? And he said, Yes, ma'am, may I help you? And another pause and she said, The Kirk from the book? And he said, Yes, ma'am, may I help you? And she said, Oh, I didn't know that this was your phone number, your home phone number in the book. And he said, Yeah, Gloria thought that if people needed to get her, that they probably ought to be able to reach her easily. So she put her home phone number in thousands of books. I mean, what author does that? <laughs> yeah. But I did. Well, it means it means you're available. You're not. I am very available. My whole life is in book form. The good, the bad, the ugly, the vile, the inspirational, the mystical, it's all there. Wow. Yep. I, I don't hide anything. <laughs> it's, it's very inspirational. Absolutely. Thank is. you. Absolutely as well. A fabulous woman. <laughs> I'm so honored to have you come and share with us. You know. The pleasure is all mine, and I am so grateful to you. I've got so much to say if I just had anybody to listen to me. Yeah. Well, and now I do. <laughs> now I do. We're talking worldwide. Yeah. It's not just the United Kingdom, Laura. <laughs> worldwide. It's worldwide. It's worldwide. Yeah. <laughs> Holy guacamole. <laughs> so I'm just going to ask if there are any more questions from the listeners. Um, let me ponder what I think you should know. Ah, uh, here we go. So, yes. um, Gloria, I have been asked to ask you if you would like to have your own radio show on this uh, site. Really? Um, well, I, like I told you, this is my first one today doing it like this in the first place. So, can I 
think about that? Because I mean, my yeah. normal response would be, oh, heck yeah, I would like to do that because I do have plenty to say. Um, but with what's going on right now and um, trying to get that, well, that would help. Um, yes, I would consider it. Yeah, have a think. Have a think. I would, yeah. And consider it because, yeah, you have, you know, there's a lot of things going on. Um, and just having, you know, read in uh, the Guts and Gloria um, just some of the things that you have on your plate at the moment, um, it would be amazing to, to be able to tune in each week for um your latest insights and uh, experiences um oh but, wow but obviously the healing center um is is pretty kind of probably up there as a massive number one priority at the moment um, right to to create that space uh to accommodate um what is is a continuous stream of those who you know um, hear your message and come to receive your your healing your help your love your support your food um right <laughs> I'm, I'm there I'll throw recipes in. <laughs> i've been just reading some of the things that you were feeding people and i'm like wow right. this, i know <laughs> you know biscuits everything <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> when they had me in Wilshire Boulevard meeting out there in LA, um, talking to one of the big networks, and he said, I would like to have you go on Oprah, this is way back when, uh, not to talk about your books, your newest book, but to talk about you having your own daytime program. And he said, the only reason I don't want to do that is because it's a full-time job in itself, and you wouldn't have time to do what you're so gifted to do. And I said, you're wrong. If you gave me a daytime program, I could teach more people how to do this. Yep. But then it never came to pass. I fell through the cracks once again. But in a, a situation like this, I could be teaching people without traveling. Because I have ping-ponged across this United States and into Canada. And all I got was tired. <laughs> I'm, that's why I wanted to do a center and let people come to me. Because I've traveled everywhere and seen nothing except an airport, a motel, a conference room, and back home again. Mm -hmm. And it was very wearing, and I did it raising four kids. Wow, yeah. And yeah. getting my Ph.D. and doing all that stuff and writing books and, you know, but so, I certainly would consider it. Awesome, because yeah. I've just had another um, message in, so it says um, you've got lots to say. I so do. It's got, <laughs> so Gaz has got a slot. And um, you could even read your books on the show. Oh, so wow. So maybe that I could will give you another. <laughs> yeah. Right. Maybe That's give you another idea. incentive, you know, right. to actually right. give you a platform for your voice. Huh? Thank you. Wow. I would like to say the first book I ever started writing was November 10th, 1985. And the back cover is still burned into my brain. And I did put it in Guts and Glory, uh, but I want to say it today because I think it's so important that of how empowered this country and world is going to become. Uh, but it's, good morning, my precious. This is your friendly wake-up call. In the still of the night, you experienced a nightmare of strife, sickness, struggle, and warring amongst brothers. It's time to throw back the blankets that have covered you in despair. It's time for you to put your feet firmly on the foundation of truth. It's time for you to stand in your power. And it's time for us to have our sovereignty, to stand in that power that he placed within each and every one of us, that we don't look to one another, that we look directly to him and watch the miracles unfold, because I'm telling you, they are unfolding and they will. I'm very excited. I'm sorry that the world had to go through so much ugliness to see, and they're going to be so shocked to find out how deep it went and all that. Mm. I but think that the, the layers are just coming to the surface, aren't they, of, you know, how exactly. deep that, yep. that darkness goes, you know. But yep. So where we go, when we go all, I'm telling you. I mean, I was yep. so happy to hear that one-liner because... Yep. 
uh, I could be happy and excited that I could do what I could do, but my excitement lies in the fact of letting everybody know how to do this too. And I don't let people put me on a pedestal ever because I am not special and I'm not demeaning myself at all in saying that I'm not special. Everybody is or nobody is, you know. So for you to become empowered and to know and be dazzled by all the different things that you will be aware that you can do that you don't even know that you can do until it's happening through you. And there are some amazing things. Um, some of the things were documented between doctors, you know, of things that happened through me. Walter Reed Army Medical Hospital, which was a big deal. A man got his heart healed through me who was going to have surgery and, and then he didn't, which the the wife of that man that got healed through me and she went and told Luann Stalkop in Spokane, she owns the Open Line newspaper and so Luann invited me to become a columnist for her and I've been doing that since 1995. Um, I had a temporary time out because I got my I got raped to dead um, and had nothing of importance to say at the time, but I am a columnist there and being, uh, they're reviewing me right now to maybe have me be a columnist in a Minnesota newspaper as well. And I'm like the spiritual Irma Bombeck writing about everyday situations and turning them into inspirational columns. So if I could just add to my repertoire here that um, I have a radio program too, and then we go on to movies, right? Is anybody out there? Because I've got a couple movie ideas ready to rock and roll, too. You know, I've got... Uh, my daughter called me one day and she said, Mama, you're the most self-actualized person I've ever met in my entire life or even heard of. And I said, well, Daniel, I don't know what self-actualized means. And she said that you fulfill everything that you came to the planet to do. And I started laughing and I said, right, I'm laying here on the couch in fetal position, barely able to breathe and you think think I'm self-actualized? <laughs> I don't think so. But she said, look at how much you got accomplished even raising four kids. Now imagine without daddy and us four kids in your way, the things that you can get accomplished on the planet. And she's right. <laughs> yeah. I know it. If you just get yourself out of the way and watch and see what God does, because we didn't plan this radio interview. I haven't planned the three that happened before you. Uh, when I used to teach workshops, people would come and I'd be in L.A. maybe teaching and somebody would say, would you come to Boston? And I would say, it would be my pleasure. And at Boston, they'd say, would you come to Seattle? It would be my pleasure. And it just kept snowballing. And that's what's happening with all this, too. The next step and the next step and just don't be afraid to say sure <laughs> yes I, it would be my pleasure but again I have so much to say and just to inspire I say uh, on the back of the book or in the book it was on the back of the book at first and then it got moved but a people pleaser because I'm referring to people pleasers they're God lovers the people that care about people and they've been abused and it's time for that to stop to use that beautiful gift of people pleasing to your benefit rather than to your detriment and I even describe a people pleaser as simple as someone who is willing to change the toilet paper at home or in public for the comfort of those who follow behind you don't even think about it because as a mother usually you're the one you walk in there and there's no toilet paper and you go oh, whatever but a people pleaser is going to make sure even in public that the next person they'll go tell somebody in the gas station or whatever you're out of toilet paper in there they pass it on so the next person will have the comfort of it um, and my girlfriend who's here visiting right now she's actually the one that gave me the one-liner for this she said you know why we do that don't you Gloria oh I can't tell you because I can't say that word on the radio again. <laughs> but you read it in the book it's funny it's really funny about why we do that <laughs> Oh, well, that's a little teaser for everyone who wants to uh, grab that book. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so you will have the Guts and Glory right there on your channel where people can download it immediately if they hear this? I can, yep, I can put or that not, up. If with, they do. Okay. Yep. I Wonderful. Facebook page okay. Yay. Well, please um, 
just know how much I appreciate that you've even done this and opened your hearts and abilities for me to do this and to reach out and touch so many today. You're so welcome. You are an absolute inspiration, you know, and I um, second your daughter. You know, I've, I don't think I've, well, we haven't actually met physically yet, um, but I haven't met such a self-actualized person either. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I think if you go look in the mirror, you'll see that you are one. You just had to get. <laughs> you just had to get out of the way. I'm just a demonstration. I am. I'm literally just a demonstration of what you can do too. If one of us can do it, we all can do it. And Jesus yes. already did it. And that's why I believe that. Well, if He could, so can I. And I can. And so can you. Yep. And we are, and we have been. Yeah. We already have been. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. One of one of my favorite one of my favorite quotes is all this you will do and more right can I tell you a story about the and more I love this story Please because do. I had <laughs> I had just talked about that in one of my open line newspaper columns about he said this and more mm -hmm. that you can do and then I get a call from a lady who is pregnant and the baby the fetus has already been diagnosed with spina bifida mm -hmm. and she said I would like to come to you um, but I don't have money to pay you and I said lucky for you because I don't charge and she said well but um, also next excuse my husband doesn't believe in this stuff and I said well you know what you could just come and then when the baby comes out and is born okay you could just say to your husband I prayed for a miracle and I got it you just didn't say how you got it but anyway she did finally come over and when I laid hands on her I knew that it was a baby boy and I knew that it was going to be all right and so the baby was born and the different circumstances they waited three days they were going to originally operate on the baby the first day that he was born but they just weren't quite sure if they even were going to need to so they waited three days and oh I said the only payment I would like is after the baby is born I would love for you to bring him by so I can see him that's the only thing and other than that I do everything unconditionally but anyway the baby was born and there weren't the problems that they were expecting to have but she never brought the baby by and then one day I was in the store and I saw her and she saw me and she turned and went down a different aisle and if I saw her on the street she would cross to the other side of the street and it was hurting my feelings because there's a Gloria personality in here too and my feelings were hurt that I just wanted to see the baby up close and get to hold him and then as it turned out one day she was at the store and unloading her groceries up to check out and she couldn't run from me and that toddler was sitting in the cart and I got to see him and what a beautiful child but the awareness of these and greater things ye will do also to heal somebody while they're still in the womb and I thought that was pretty awesome that was that was one of the most amazing things for me that let's not limit God in any way. No, absolutely. No. I know it. I, I mean, no, I've yeah. found that on occasion as well where, you know, people ask for a miracle and they're not actually able or willing to I accept know. That, that that is a possibility. Exactly. So it kind know. of, you know, reverts itself sometimes because people just can't actually handle the fact that you could be performing a miracle for with them because it's right. not you doing it. You know. Well, I did understand, you know, from her perspective too, because I'm a Libra and I can see both sides. Yeah. Um, the fact that in 20 minutes her whole life changed and it was no out-of-pocket expense to have that happen. And that is kind of overwhelming to even yeah. think about. So I did understand it, but yeah. I finally got to see the toddler up close, too. <laughs> <laughs> also, um, I've met a lot of people that are not believers until they are. I had a woman that, um, after she had been in my healing chair, and she was saying, Gloria this and Gloria that, and her husband got really sick of hearing it. I'm so sick of hearing about Gloria this and Gloria that. And he said, if Gloria asks you to jump off a cliff, I suppose you'd do it, right? And she said, well, Gloria would never ask me to do that, but if she did, yes, I would. And so 
she called and told me that her husband was having a hard time about hearing all about my activities and I said well ask if he'll come sit in the healing chair and she said he's a non-believer and I said okay well ask if he wants to come sit in my healing chair for about 20 minutes and we'll see and so he came over and the last words he said to me before I laid hands on was I don't believe in this crap and I said I know just sit there and behave and I my first miracle I'm not going to talk for the next 20 minutes and <laughs> I laid hands on and when I took hands off and came around to him to face him again and I said well how are you feeling right now and he said if you told me to jump off a cliff I would <laughs> <laughs> I said well I won't ask you to do that <laughs> but I love working with non-believers too because all you have to do is feel the presence of God and then it's the rest of the story yeah and none of my books have repeat miracle stories they're all different ones you know so it's not buy one book or buy ten books and read the same stories over and over and over the original one of Danielle and a little extra love is in all the books just to get me going and and then the rest follows but yes I love doing what I do I love my life I love that you have a life and I want your life to be just as grand as mine and do everything I can to teach you everything I know to make that happen and there is an IOU one slumber party. <laughs> she can come too. <laughs> yeah, the, the the trio were getting back together. <laughs> right, exactly. No kidding. Do you smoke and drink and cuss? Oh, absolutely. Every single oh, good. day. Okay. <laughs> you don't know the half of it. I tell you. <laughs> In the last interview, and I think it's important for these people to know that, in the last interview, my interviewer asked me, she said, now, I'm sure you must not smoke and drink and cuss and that you eat organic and all that. And I said, I smoke and drink and cuss and I don't necessarily eat organic unless it's on sale. There is nothing you have to do in particular to give up in order to do this. And people think that you have to become pure before you can come face to face with God and that's not the way it works that's a, we've been misled to think that we're wrong or bad if we do this that or the other you know um, alcoholism drug abuse uh, we have to raise the vibration but those things are not preventing us per se from being connected to the divinity within ourselves there is no need for somebody outside yourself to think they have all the answers and tell you what to do or how to do it because we can get it direct yeah free will choices. yes yes but yes and I'll say it again and please let's not make this harder than it needs to be because he can use every single one of us and does and will for the greater good of all humanity did you finish reading guts and glory uh I haven't finished it yet. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm still, <laughs> still, I'm still in the midst through. of it. I was reading it this morning, and just at any any time I have available, um, I am I'm going through it. I'm about uh, chapter eight, so it's it's oh, okay. It's, on, it's ongoing. It's yep. ongoing. Right. And, um, just loving it, loving it. Oh, good. Mm. It's got a lot of information in it, and on many levels too, mm. but. Um, my editor of the open line newspaper and I asked her if she would give me a review for my website on that book and she said wow you got a lot of information packed in that book you would never have to write another book but you will <laughs> 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 I've got several in my head right this minute <laughs> wow fantastic yeah you're gonna have to start writing those soon <laughs> right just being the messenger though is fun because it is power packed I go on about two to three hours sleep at that much a day when I'm writing because during the day I'm doing healings and I'm writing at night he wakes me up about 1 30 usually to start writing and I can see it scrolling through my head of what I'm going to be writing so I just do it yeah yeah fabulous oh so are there any other questions that anyone has 
last minute questions for Gloria? <coughs> well, okay. it seems like it might be a potential that Gloria will be a regular contributor if it is his will. <laughs> <laughs> We will see what we will see what comes. It would really be great to uh, tune in every week, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Oh, indeed. <laughs> oh, sorry, I thought we had a had a Skype moment there, but it, all is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I would like to thank you immensely for coming on the show and sharing time with us and. Um, inspiring and uplifting and giving hope to everyone who listens to you um, and I send you all of my love thank you the producer just sent a message that he wants a book is he uh -huh. yes is he talking about the guts and glory uh? yeah okay yeah, and yeah. yes okay. is the answer then <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We will put up put, put up the website um, and then obviously people can just go to the website and there is a, a, a picture with the with the, the heart and the name of the book and then it's just a PDF download um, and if there's any problems obviously they can come back to come back um, to me Carly come back to you and um, and we can sort any anything out any issues out wonderful to wonderful to see you Gloria and um, yeah. I, I still volunteered to get the onesies, so we're, we're oh, covered. Oh, all right. We're covered, for, we're covered for the party, for the, for the sleepover. There you go. <laughs> and onesies was a good idea, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> On some level. Right. <laughs> and, and, and thank you again today, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh. I'm glad I got to be part of this. Absolutely, absolutely wonderful. More people are aware now, and it will, it's going to ripple. This book, I mentioned the other day, and I'm not saying this from an egotistical level, because as an author, um, in the olden days, I would have hoped to have a best selling book, but that's not what this is about. Uh, and if this is the most read book in the entire world at a time of such importance that it can help and transform and make this as gentle as possible with the awakening, physical and spiritual awakening as it is. Um, I'm just so glad to be part of the whole process and along for the ride. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so I'm going to say good night to everybody. Um, good night, Gloria. We will catch up very soon for that slumber party. Thank you. <laughs> Take care. So, thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>